Leaked images from Giga Texas just confirmed what insiders have been whispering. Tesla's Model 2 is real, priced at $30,000, and comes with factory Starlink. Not optional, standard. While competitors scrambled to cut costs on budget EVs, Tesla quietly weaponized satellite connectivity. The prototypes show GigaPress molds casting 47% fewer parts, making this the fastest car to build in Tesla's history. But here's the real question. With 270 horsepower, 300 mile range, and global internet built in, how exactly does anyone compete with this? Let's talk about what everyone's tiptoeing around. Factory Starlink isn't just a nice to have feature. It's a chess move nobody saw coming. Tesla owns both ends, the car and the satellites 340 miles overhead. BYD can't do this. Volkswagen doesn't have satellites. Toyota can't suddenly launch a constellation. So what's Tesla really planning here? Internal sources say Giga Texas has been testing Model 2 prototypes with Starlink since late 2025. Not just for internet, they're testing real-time navigation that works without cell towers, software updates deliverable in the middle of nowhere, and the framework for premium data packages. Think about that for a second. Tesla isn't making money on the $30,000 sticker price. They're betting on years of back-end revenue after you drive away. This isn't a car company anymore. This is a tech platform that happens to have wheels. And suddenly, the target market makes perfect sense. Rural drivers who've been completely ignored because there's no charging infrastructure out there? They're in. Rideshare drivers working outside cities? They're in. Anyone tired of paying $80 a month for phone data? They're curious. Tesla just made electric cars appealing for reasons that have nothing to do with saving the planet. That's brilliant, frankly. Smartphones didn't beat flip phones by being greener. They won by being necessary. But here's where it gets wild. Critics say satellite hardware is expensive. So how does Tesla keep it under $30,000? Easy. Musk owns both companies. Tesla pays SpaceX at cost for parts they're already making. Every other automaker would need to negotiate with third-party providers at retail prices. That's not a competitive advantage you can engineer around. It's structural. It's permanent. What really strikes me is how this reframes everything. You're not buying a budget Tesla. You're buying internet access that includes a car. That psychological flip matters. It transforms the Model 2 from the cheap option into the one with capabilities nobody else has. Once you experience connectivity everywhere, cars without it feel like downgrades. Tesla just moved the goalposts for the entire industry. Everyone's talking about Starlink, but honestly, the factory floor is where the real magic happens. Those leaked images from Giga Texas show molds that eliminate 47% of parts, not reduce, eliminate. Think about how cars normally get built. Thousands of pieces welded together like a metal jigsaw puzzle. Tesla's approach? Cast entire sections as single aluminum chunks. The underbody is three pieces instead of 70. Every eliminated part saves assembly time, cuts, labor costs, removes failure points, and drops weight. The Model 2 weighs 14% less than Model 3. That's free range, free performance, free efficiency. Now here's the detail that made me stop and reread the specs. The front axle to driver's door, 0.8 meters. Sounds boring until you realize what they pulled off. By shoving the wheels to the corners and deleting the engine bay, they created interior space that rivals compact SUVs in a car that's only 4.22 meters long. You can park where a Civic can't, but seat four adults comfortably. The flat floor gives you legroom that embarrasses cars twice the price. That's not packaging, that's spatial wizardry. Structural rigidity improved 18% through Giga Press construction. Translation, better crashes, tighter corners, less noise, more solid feel. Tesla learned from Model 3. People forgive missing luxury, they don't forgive cheap feeling cars.
So they engineered quality into the bones instead of slapping on sound deadening later. Smarter, cheaper, better. And here's what competitors can't copy. Every Model 2 Tesla builds teaches their AI systems how to build the next one faster. Traditional manufacturers can't suddenly install GigaPress equipment. The capital cost is insane. The learning curve is brutal. And by the time they'd catch up, Tesla's built millions. That's a moat you can't engineer around. Step inside and you immediately get what they're doing. This isn't Model 3 with stuff removed. It's purpose-built from scratch. One 10.5 to 11-inch screen runs everything. Same software as Model X. Climate, navigation, music, phone mirroring, all there. People will complain about no physical buttons. Tesla's betting they're wrong. Fewer buttons means fewer parts to break. Software controls can update remotely. That basic sound system today? Next year's update might unlock spatial audio. The car improves after you buy it. Show me another $30,000 car that does that. Fabric seats instead of leather. Storage cubbies instead of a center console. Touch steering controls instead of mechanical stalks. Each decision does two things. Cuts costs and reinforces, this is a Tesla. Panoramic roof, gone. It adds weight and thermal headaches. Premium audio, most people stream Spotify anyway. Powered seats, what separates Tesla from cheap Chinese EVs flooding the market is this. They didn't cut randomly. They cut strategically using data from millions of vehicles. They know which features people actually use versus which look good in ads. That's surgical cost reduction that doesn't hurt the experience. But they kept what matters. Full connectivity, regular updates, autopilot hardware built in, same interface as the flagship models. You're not buying less Tesla, you're buying focused Tesla. That matters enormously for how people feel about their purchase. This is where things go from competitive to potentially game over for everyone else. Two battery options reportedly, proven LFP cells from Model 3 slash Y, or the commercial debut of aluminum ion batteries developed with CATL under the Shenzhen 2 platform. Why aluminum ion matters? Lithium ion charges slowly because lithium ions physically can't move faster through the electrolyte. Aluminum ion chemistry allows faster transfer. The leaked specs claim 0 to 80% in 15 to 20 minutes. 50 miles of range in 30 seconds. Not minutes. Seconds. If that's real, the charging takes too long argument dies instantly. Stop for coffee. Leave with 250 plus miles. That's faster than gas stations half the time. And aluminum is way more abundant than lithium, so costs drop while supply chain risk decreases. Tesla would have battery tech that's cheaper, faster, and more sustainable than anything competitors can touch in 2026. Even with basic LFP batteries, base Model 2 gets 250 to 300 miles. Premium versions hit 350. That's more than a Camry on a full tank in a car that costs less and never needs gas. The math becomes impossible to argue with. Performance numbers are frankly absurd. Single motor makes 270 horsepower, hits 60 in 6.5 seconds. Dual motor pushes 350 horses and does it in 4.8. A BMW 3 Series costs $45,000 and does 0 to 60 in 5.6 with a gas engine. Tesla's delivering sports car acceleration in an entry-level EV. That alone redefines what affordable means. What keeps CEOs awake isn't that Tesla built a good cheap EV, it's that copying this strategy is literally impossible for them. BYD makes great affordable EVs. They've mastered batteries and vertical integration in China, but they don't own satellites. They can't offer global connectivity standard. Their cars compete on traditional specs. Teslas compete and connect everywhere simultaneously. Volkswagen has scale and European dominance. They're stuck negotiating with suppliers for every part. Tesla makes batteries, motors, chips, and gets satellite hardware from a sister company at cost. VW's cost structure can't touch that, 
and restructuring would take a decade and tens of billions. Rivian and Lucid build impressive vehicles. They're also burning billions quarterly, targeting luxury buyers. Pivoting to $30,000 would mean redesigning everything, retooling factories, renegotiating every contract. By then, Tesla's sold millions and refined production to where competing becomes financially impossible. Chinese brands like Wuling and Neo offer cheap EVs domestically. They lack global charging infrastructure, international brand trust, and software ecosystems that make Tesla ownership feel different. Cars that get better monthly create loyalty price can't buy. This is Tesla's real advantage. Not one feature, but owning everything. They design chips running software controlling motors powered by batteries they make, charged at their stations, connected via their satellites, built with their machinery. Everyone else assembles supplier parts. The efficiency gap isn't closable through better execution. It's structural. If aluminum ion debuts successfully, Tesla gets a three to five year lead on the most critical EV component. By the time competitors copy it, Tesla's shipping version 2.0. That's how moats get built, not through secrecy, but execution so fast that copying becomes irrelevant. Market sentiment shifted hard. Analysts who mock the $25,000 Tesla as vaporware now model it into projections. Forums that ridicule delays now dissect leaked specs. The narrative flipped from if to when, and more importantly, how do we respond? Nobody has an answer yet, so here's what it comes down to. Competitors can't match this because Tesla isn't building a cheaper car. They're building a cheaper ecosystem. The Model 2 isn't just transportation, it's global connectivity, software that evolves monthly, and manufacturing tech that compounds advantages with every unit. At $30,000, that's not a product. That's a platform that rewrites the rules. And this is just the opening move. If aluminum ion batteries deliver 30 second charging, range anxiety dies permanently. If Starlink integration works as designed, rural EV adoption explodes overnight. We're watching the exact moment electric vehicles shift from alternative choice to inevitable choice. The real question isn't whether legacy automakers can compete, it's whether they survive what comes next. What's your take? Does this force competitors to innovate or does Tesla just run the table? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you want more deep dives like this breaking down what's really happening in the EV revolution, hit that subscribe button for Tesla Zone and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And if this analysis added value, leave a like. It genuinely helps us reach more people who care about where this industry's headed. This is Tesla Zone. The acceleration's real, and we're just getting started. A leaked video from Giga Nevada just confirmed what the trucking industry feared most. Tesla's Semi Gen 2 isn't just an upgrade, it's a complete game changer. Engineers caught on camera literally cheering as the truck smashed through 1.2 megawatts of charging power, a number no electric semi has ever touched. But here's what nobody's talking about. Why did DHL immediately double down and order more trucks after just one test? What did they discover during that 3,000-mile trial that made a logistics giant bet their entire fleet strategy on Elon's electric beast? Let's talk about what really happened during that DHL trial because this is where everything clicks into place. Picture this, a global logistics company with decades of experience known for being extremely cautious